Let us be in worship and remember before God this glorious servant, Paul Master, who invested his life and lived an abundantly full life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the promises of God. God is near to all who call, who call from their hearts. The desires of those who fear God are fulfilled. Their cries are heard. They are saved. Fear not, says our Lord. I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I am the resurrection and the life. They who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. God has made everything suitable for its time. Friends, we gather here in the protective shelter of God's healing love. We are free to pour out our grief, release our anger, face our emptiness, and know that God cares. We gather as God's people, conscious of others who have died and the frailty of our own existence on earth. We come to comfort and to support one another in our common loss. We gather to hear God's word of hope that can drive away our despair and move us to offer God our praise. We gather to commend to God with thanksgiving the life of our friend, Paul Master, as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection. For whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Christ, who is Lord of the dead and of the living. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose will is sovereign and whose mercy is boundless, look upon us in our sorrow and enable us to hear your word that through patience and the encouragement of the scriptures, we may hold fast to the assurance of your favor and the hope of life eternal through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Let us join in singing our opening hymn, number 28 in the hymnal, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
let us hear these words of comfort that come to us from God's holy word, beginning first with the 46th Psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease. To the end of the earth, he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In the 121st Psalm, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and evermore. Let us join in reading and saying Psalm 23 in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lie. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 21, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. May God bless us in the hearing of these words.
This past Sunday, we were shocked and then saddened that our friend and companion, Paul Master, had died. Despite the fact that we knew he had been battling cancer for the past five years, it was difficult to believe that he left us so suddenly. I, for one, bought into his bravado that he was doing fine, no pain on top of it, keeping the cancer at bay. He told me to expect that he would still be here looking after things around the church for some time to come, probably even after I had left. It was just a couple of weeks ago that he led the trustees in a walkthrough of the church, making sure that there was a list of things that needed attention and a wish list for the future. When he was lying in his bed at the hospital last week, he said he needed to get out of there because there were things at the church that concerned him. I pleaded with him to let go of his worries about the church and concentrate on taking care of himself. He smiled and said he would try. But frankly, I doubt that he was able. Our friend Paul was active, even in his mind, to the very end. Our feeling is, no matter his illness, that he went before his time. He was such a vital and active force in our church and in our lives. He had so many things yet to do, to accomplish, to tell others what needed to be done, and make sure they were taken care of. My feeling, shared by many of you, I'm sure, is that he went before his time. And you and I know, with his compulsive attitude, his unwillingness to sit by and watch things left undone, things that might go wrong, I think we would have felt that no matter how long he may have lived. It was too soon. We are sad and sorrowful because Paul was a vital part of us. He was a person who cared about people, his family, his friends, and his church. He gave of himself in all of these. He was generous with himself and what he had to share. There were so many times when I would find Paul at the church taking care of something, meeting the fire marshal, fixing some plumbing fixture, whatever. Those of you who were here when lightning struck the church, you will remember that it was Paul who was the point man for the contractors, the insurance, and whatever else, to get the church back in order. He was there, faithful and regular, to be counted on. That relationship with a friend and companion has changed, and we are sad. This morning, I would have us remember Paul and to acknowledge the sorrow we share and to be open to the comfort God gives in our time of grief. Following my remarks, I will open our gathering to the remarks of others so that you all will have an opportunity to share your remembrances. There is just so much to say about Paul. I learned from his family that he liked socializing with friends, playing cards and other games. He liked fishing, took up golf in retirement, and he enjoyed taking his truck to truck shows. But mostly he liked helping people. He liked doing things for others in a way that would help them. He was a man of strength, of compassion, of conviction. Oh, he could be so stubborn sometimes. (laughs) But certainly of humor and warmth. And 
He was all of this because he was centered. Such centeredness comes only, I think, when one knows who, what he is about and has come to terms with life and his responsibilities. As I see Paul, he was an individualist without being individualistic. That is, he was his own man, but he was not cut off from other people. We loved Paul because he let us know that he loved us. And so now we feel the hurt and the sorrow of his passing. We grieve his loss, our loss. If there is one thing of which I am sure of today, it is of our sorrow. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says something that at first seems contradictory. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. This is not so much a contradiction as it is a paradox. Often great truth is held in tensions of paradox. Sorrow and comfort are opposite extremes, and yet wisdom asks us to look closely at sorrow, for in wisely handling our sorrow, we find the true meaning of life. Jesus did not say that sorrow was good. He assumed that it was inevitable. It is part of life. And we do not really begin to live until we learn how to handle sorrow creatively and with meaning. There is strength to be found in our sorrow, strange as it may seem. Meaningful sorrow knows how to let go of the past so that we can find a larger meaning in the future. For creative sorrow, we need to draw upon the resources of our faith. We need to face our own inadequacies for holding life together, to let go and let God be God, let God hold and comfort us and move us to strength. In this faith, we find confidence that there is a tomorrow. Faith brings confidence. Religious faith does not deny the pain of sorrow. Rather, it eases the pain by fitting it to our strengthened resources for meeting it. And so it is on this sad occasion. We are invited to move beyond our grief and sorrow into the celebration of Paul's life and the celebration of life itself. Had we not known Paul, there would be no grief. What tragedy had there not been Paul Master. Thanks be to God who gives life and with it the capacity to care and feel deeply for others and one's community. Thanks be to God for blessing this world with Paul Master and his special life. Let us indeed celebrate his life. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 393, All to Jesus I Surrender.
This is the time for celebrating Paul's life. And I turn this over to you and begin to be first, we first begin that there are members of the family who would like to share something. And you can either come up to the lectern or you can do it from where you are. I'm Paul's son. I'm Jeff. I got some uh, words from other family members. These are um, from my sister Tanya's family. What they wrote, Jacob um, is a grandson. I remember when Grandpa taught me to play cards. I always liked the fact that when we visited with Grandma and Grandpa, we could always get together and play some sort of board game or card game. Grandpa would always make me laugh with his funny facial expressions. One of his granddaughters, Emily. Around the end of July, my grandparents came to visit. I was so happy to see them all again. I also had to work, and Papa wanted to drive me to and from work. While he drove me, we would talk about his childhood memories and how he had a job at my age, too. We would bond over the smallest things, and I really enjoyed talking to him when it was just him and I. Another memory I love is when he was teaching me how to paint by number and solve crossword puzzles really fast. Those were his favorite things to do. He loved teaching me those things. It really created great memories I will never forget. His other granddaughter, Megan. My fondest memory with Papa is when he would be visiting, he would always take us out to Denny's. When we all got together, we always made it, he always made it so funny, and we never wanted to leave. The funniest thing was when we would poke fun at Grandma for always having to talk to the strangers in the booth near us, <laughs> but still stay smiling at her the whole time. Um, his son-in-law, AJ. In the beginning, we were on the fourth tee box when I asked Dad for Tanya's hand in marriage. I will never forget the words that preceded my question. He said, she's ready. I have always made it my life's number one goal to take care of Tanya and take over the wonderful job he did raising her. I have always enjoyed the countless rounds of golf that we played and the laughs we shared at each other's expense on the course. Dad always lived his life without leaving any doubt. This was certainly the case this past summer with his trip across the eastern part of the United States Many questions why he was doing this in his condition, but I knew why. He was taken as a victory lap and seeing all the great success he had first hand in his family. Hit him straight up there, Dad. Your son, favorite son in law, AJ. <laughs> yep. Uh, this is a writing from my daughter, Kalila, who you heard sing earlier. Uh, memories for goodbye. Early Sunday morning, while I was sleeping in my bed, my grandfather was taking his last breaths. Little did I know that he was also saying goodbye. I used to associate the smell of pipe tobacco with to my grandfather. He would always give us big, warm, loving hugs, and he smelled of it. I found it comforting. When he would come to visit us, he would sit outside with crossword puzzles and enjoy the weather, holding on to his pipe. Sometimes I would sit out there with him. I usually read a book, but other times we would talk. There was a comfort to be found in the companionship. One of the times he visited us in Wisconsin, before the cancer, my brother tripped while he was entering the house. 
Papa just leaned over to him and asked if he had a nice trip, and they would see him next fall. <laughs> it is the first time I remembered hearing that joke. Humor was just one of the things that he did. I think he just loved to make people laugh and smile. And as things progressed, it became a way of coping. My grandfather didn't just use humor to make people smile. He would see someone who needed help and stop, asking if there was anything he could do. I can't remember a time when he wasn't offering to help to those around him. If you had told him the only thing you needed was a shirt on his back, he would have given it to you. I have fond memories of from last summer. We were at the beach enjoying a Florida weather, and I was in the water with my parents and brother. I remember my mom telling me to look back at my grandfather, so I did. He was sitting on the shore, going through the sand, looking for she seashells and shark teeth. It was a sight I will never forget. You will always be in my heart, Papa. Rest in peace, knowing you will always be remembered with love. Kalila, master. <laughs> he will be loved and he will be missed. Thank you for sharing all of that. Others? Thank you. Oh, Barbara. Welcome, everyone. I don't know if I'll have the strength to go through, but I'll try. I think Pastor Joe took every single word out of my mouth. <sighs> but, however, I want to give my personal gratitude for all that Paul did for me and my family. Four months ago, I was sitting where Diana is now sitting. I met Paul and got to know him when we had our first vacation Bible school. And Paul and I worked together then. And I could see his love and the dedication for the work that he did in this church. Paul was a purpose-driven man for matters related to this church. He was a pillar of this church. He was a thoroughbred in this church. I remember um, when my husband was quite ill and he couldn't even drive to go to the cancer center for treatment and Paul was there for weeks every Monday morning to take him to the cancer center for his treatment and no matter how he felt I know that sometimes his medical issues were quite severe but he never caved in if you ask him a favor he would be ready to do whatever you needed to do and sometimes I avoided asking him because I knew he was in a lot of pain Paul is one of just one of the kindest human beings that I have ever known. And he and Diana had a good script because when it came to generosity and kindness, they were on the same page. Paul was dedicated to his God, his family, his church, and his helpfulness to others. I have heard of cases where people were recuperating and had no one to take care of them, and Diana and Paul took them in, the, in their house, took care of them until they were ready to get back on their feet. This man had a capacity for love and kindness that went beyond the beyond. Paul always had a smiling face, a big bear hug, encouraging words, and a helping hand. I know that he is no longer in pain, and we're happy for that, 
but we grieve because we miss him so much. But we know that he's in a better place, and I know he's up there. He and Claude probably just looking down on us with their sweet spirit and smiling, and we have to go on. We love him, and we miss him. We will miss him forever. Thank you, Barbara. Becky. I think we'll all sound like recordings today. I first met Paul when I went on the Board of Trustees many years ago, and we worked together on various projects over the years. He was instrumental in putting this church back together after the fire, but even not mentioned was the time after a church picnic and we're coming home. Lausanne calls and says, we have damage or part of the roof is missing in Decker Hall. And so we went again. He worked so hard for this church. We know this, and I don't think we can, as a friend and as a member of this church, I don't think we can ever thank him enough. And as said, Paul was one of the kindest men I've ever met, and he was always willing to lend a hand. Once he helped Ralph remove a hurricane shutter, and out slithered a snake. And I, we have never, ever seen Paul move that fast. <laughs> ever. But most of all, Ralph and I will miss all the fun times we had together, whether it be yard sales or going out to dinner or the many things that we did. We often played hand and foot with Marv and Jill, Diana, Ralph, and I. And somehow, he always sat on the left of me. Paul, I will miss passing you all those red threes. Thank you, Becky. Ruth or Joan? Thank you, Joan. Anybody else? Okay. During the reception afterwards, I'm sure you'll all be sharing memories and stories of fall. Let us be in prayer. 
Merciful God, we thank you for your word, which is a lamp for our feet, a light for our path. We thank you especially that in the night of our grief and in the shadows of our sorrow, we are not left to ourselves. We have the light of your promises to sustain and comfort us. Through our tears, give us vision to see in faith the consolation you intend for us. In your mercy, grant us the unfailing guidance of your saving word, both in life and in death, through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. O God, our strength and our creator, giver of life and conqueror of death, we praise you with humbled hearts. With faith in your great mercy and wisdom, we entrust Paul to your eternal care. We praise you for your steadfast love for him all the days of his earthly life. We thank you for all that he was to those who loved him and for his faithfulness to the church of Jesus Christ. We thank you that for Paul all sickness and sorrow are ended and death itself is past and that he has entered the place of eternal rest. And now, God of all mercies and all comfort, in tender love and compassion, embrace your sorrowing servants. Be their refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Show them again the love of Christ that passes all understanding. For by thy death, Christ has conquered death, and by rising, Christ has opened to all of us the gates of everlasting life. Thanks be to you, O God. Amen. Let us join in singing the hymn that is an insert on eagle's wings.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.